Hi, I'm George K. This is my father Niels. Hi. Welcome back to another episode of Father and Synthesizer. Today we've got something very special for you. We're talking about an update for our wavetable synthesizer. Now I'll show you what we're talking about. Hi folks and welcome back to this module. You know this, this is the wavetable synthesizer, isn't it? Yes it is. Listen to it. That's very much the wavetable synthesizer as we know and love it. But this is version 1.1. And let's see what happens if I turn this uh, wavetable selection knob. We've got a square wave and oh, what's that? FM? What's FM? This sounds like a sine wave to me. But look what happens when I turn this mod knob. Just a little bit. And a little bit more. That's right, with update 1.1 we've added an FM synthesizer to this wavetable synthesizer. So this is now the very best synthesizer you could build yourself, in my opinion. It, it should fit into any rack setup, into anything that's working with MIDI. And it's uh, still fairly complicated to use because it was never actually intended to be an FM synthesizer. We just happened to have this spare knob on, uh, on the front panel and uh, connected it up to the STM on the inside. Oh, I'm not gonna rip this apart, I'm sorry. Let me explain how FM synthesis works in this case. I'm not sure if it's one operator FM, two operator FM, I don't know exactly how to define an operator and I haven't bothered googling it. But uh, the thing is, we have a frequency that's played by MIDI. This is a C note, for example. And this is just a sine wave because the modulator is turned to zero. And the C note is the carrier, if I understand correctly. And this is the modulator. And if you turn this, you set a frequency, but it's not really a frequency. It's a ratio of frequencies. So, for example, uh, I don't know how to I don't know how to do precise settings on this because we haven't added a screen for that yet. But let's say, for example, imagine that was five to one. So the frequency is the uh, five times the carrier frequency. That sounds pretty bad. It's not five times. Five times would sound nicer. Um, I think the range knob goes from zero, which is exactly the same frequency. So sine wave up to four times. And all of the ranges between that. The last half of the range sounds fairly similar, but uh, once you get below half... You can get some pretty cool results with this. Now let's get into the settings of this thing. With shift in the encoder you move over as usual. And then we have the first FM setting. FM start. This is at what level, at, at what volume the modulator starts. It's still a bit glitchy, all of this is not, not really as good as it could be, but we're working on that. Then we have the FM end, at what level the a modulator ends its modulation of the carrier frequency. And then obviously we have the decay, which is the envelope that takes the, takes the modulator frequency across the carrier frequency. Sorry for unfocusing there. Okay. Now I've uh, prepared a little uh, something, a little, a little one minute song for the R Synthesizers contest week thing. This week's uh, contest topic was Dead Rising. So uh, just enjoy this. Now that you've heard the synthesizer, let's talk about it. So what were the main changes we did in this update from 1.0 to 
Yeah, actually I increased the resolution of the wavetables from 8-bit um, resolution for the amplitude to 11-bit for that and the length uh, it stayed at 12-bit. We expect a better tracking in the higher ranges of the frequencies and uh, you could confirm that, right? Yeah, I've had about one morning to play with it and I've already noticed that it, the tracking is a little bit better in the high end. And the build we are pushing with this video is not going to be the final 1.1 update as we're still working on that. It, uh, we still have some work in progress features such as uh, improving the code to make it run a bit faster. Yeah, and uh, increasing the resolution of the FM wavetables as well. Because they're on 8-bit as, as of now. Yeah. So we had a little problem with it this morning. Mm -hmm. But it all, it's all working fine for now. You can, if you've got the hardware ready, you can just put the 1.1 build on there and give it a t give it a try. And if you don't, we, you should probably build that hardware because it's fairly. It's it's not the most complicated build in the world, is it? True. It, it's just the wavetable synthesizer we had in a, a few videos ago. Yeah. The only thing we changed on the hardware was uh, one potentiometer more wired uh, because we needed to adjust the, the modulation amount for the FM. At this moment, I think it's uh, fair to mention that Git as a version control software is really great. So when George phoned me this morning and said, ah, we have problem with the latest version, uh, the notes don't respond well and so on. Um, during lunch, we just loaded an older version, an older branch, which we knew was working. and. You have seen it. It, it, it's work, it works beautiful. And for this update we took time out of our big secret project that we had been working on in the background. So we basically built this entire FM update in one, one weekend, like a Friday evening I think we had the idea to do it and Saturday mm -hmm. you started, on Sunday mm -hmm. we tested and uh, today I'm, we're making the video, today's Monday. To be fair, uh, the FM algorithm is part of our secret project so this is more or less a byproduct of what we're actually doing. Yeah, we had been uh, working on this FM algorithm for months now. Weeks. Weeks. For weeks, yes. <laughs> One of the major problems is uh, dealing with signed and unsigned integers uh, because the modulation. Again. Yeah, again, but because um, the modulation it has to go back and forth. Yeah, so we, we need to we need to have positive and negative values, but in the end you want a pointer to the table which is unsigned. Also you don't want that the pointer gets too large then you're outside your table and the system crashes. So uh, it was a bit difficult <laughs> to make this work but finally yeah the result speaks for itself. And we've, uh, we've based the algorithm on the, that paper from the 70s. I'll uh, show the name and uh, link on text here, the links in the description and also that one sound on sound article on FM synthesis. Yes. They helped greatly to understand what we're doing. We, we, we're still not 100% sure what the proper terms are for the operators. If this is a one operator or two operator synth, we don't know if the modulator counts as an operator, if the envelope is an operator. Maybe some of you, you smart folks in the comments will be able to tell us what, we're, what we have here. Mm -hmm. And also regarding the uh, video from last time, the sample player 2.0 is still in the works, but it's uh, on the back burner for now. We'll get back to that soon after we finish the current project yes. and we still need to build another rack for the uh, for all of these modules because they're now just sitting in what's an old rack and it's barely working we had some huge issues with the power supply there had to basically build a new power supply for that mm. anyway our, our plan for the next episode is to show you the secret project we're working on show you how far we have come i know you'll love it it's it's going to be really great many of you will want to build that it's you can. awesome it's really awesome Eventually we want to uh, even sell that project as a uh, PCB, as a DIY kit. We'll see. So thank you very much for watching. Please check out my Instagram to see our synths in action. Check out our website where we've got all of the projects so you can build them yourself. We have a, a contact form on there if you need help with any of the builds or your own builds. We'll try to do the best we can. So thank you very much for watching and remember, stay, stay curious. curious.